I am your host, David Lee, and these are my very special guests. Gentlemen, introduce yourselves. I'm Howie Farewell. I'm the Josh Rivera. The uh, Josh Rivera. All right. And where can they find you, gentlemen? Uh, we are at the WHPC on Twitter, worldheavyweightpodcast.podbean.com, facebook.com slash worldheavyweightpodcast. Pretty much if you Google World Heavyweight Podcast, you'll get everything that we've got. All right. On iTunes, Google Play, all that stuff. Now, these guys have a great show, and so if you guys like this kind of content, if you like my show, you're definitely going to like to check these guys out, and you won't regret it. All right, so we got Howie and Josh in the studio today, and if you did not know, which today is a very special day because we are kicking off Heels Month here on Dave Knows Wrestling. (laughs) Or Villains Month, because Heels Month sounds like a shoe promo. Um, right. Yeah. So, sounds like we've got to be working at Payless. <laughs> exactly. So this is Villains Month, where all month long, we're going to be celebrating the villains of pro wrestling. So mm-hmm. I decided to have these guys on to kick off the month. And now that we're here and it's Heels Month, what are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going to talk about, let's start things off by talking about the current heels in the professional wrestling scene. A lot of good ones, too. Oh, yeah. Well, who do you think is the top heel in the company right now? Especially with the brand for, split. For, this is for hard. the big company? Or for, the, the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the E, the WWE? Anyone. Any company who is the oh, well, there, heel there's, there's, in there's, the a, there's a couple of really good ones out there, right? I'm, I'm actually, I'm one of the few people, one of the few wrestling nerds <laughs> that are out there that have really enjoyed Jinder Mahal since he showed back up being the bad guy. <laughs> Like, All right. I mean, everybody is hating on Jinder for some reason or another, but I love Jinder Mahal as the bad guy. It's I think perfect. They're, they're just jelly. That's what it is. I guess so. Well, he, he looks like a million bucks. He's got sidekicks. He's 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 getting the booze he needs. Meanwhile, when they visit India, he's going to be a superhero. The thing the thing for me is I'm not the biggest Jinder Mahal guy right now. Right. I understand his point. I've done the I think they've done a good job of booking him strongly, but I can't escape the fact that a month ago he was a jobber. Like yeah, I, I'm it, okay with that. I've gone further quick. with less. Yeah, well, all right, all right, okay. <laughs> no. Since they since they've decided to pull the trigger with that, I, I've enjoyed it. But uh, other than gender, I would say mostly women are the better heels. I think right now. Oh yeah. I was gonna say glorious. Oh, yeah. have to go to N- <laughs> I, for, for I feel like you got to go to NXT to get the better the better stuff. Besides the maybe like the Miz. Yeah. The Miz has been. Just fire for the last year and a half. Oh yeah, since he oh, won yeah. the Intercontinental Title. Yeah. But uh, Asuka and Alexa Bliss are probably the two best mm. female heels that you have in that company right now. See, my thing right now is Bobby Roode. I love Bobby Roode, no, but no. he's so over. I don't even know if he counts as, as a heel. Yeah, well, because he, he does bad guy stuff. So yeah, he, he does. To tilt th- yeah, we all love him, but we but that's the great thing about the NXT crowd too, or at least. Uh, when you get to more of the the nerdier wrestling types, that like you can still kind of cheer a heel a little yeah. bit, but as long as you you give them the boos when you're supposed to give them the boos, because I'll sit there and go boo. <laughs> he can't help but he's clap. The best. Uh, no. it's, he's magic. No, I'll give a special. I'll give a special shout out to Derek, who is on the Monday Night Wrong, named the show the Monday mm-hmm. Night Wrong, playing of course Derek. Uh, Derek actually. Now I've been to live events with Derek, and Derek actually, like, he, if he loves you, he'll still boo you if you're healed. Right. Like he'll facilitate your, oh, yeah. your your need to be. There booed. is nothing more satisfying sometimes than to find a heel working for any company. And booing them mercilessly, <laughs> like there's a there's a sort of catharsis that I have for finding that one dirtbag heel for a company that I sometimes genuinely hate, ah. and then <laughs> just heave boos and insults at them. If I could have garbage, sometimes I would throw it. Because but sometimes. Yeah. You know, Family friendly show <laughs> because well because that's what they want you know the whole point of clapping is to supposed to show appreciation but if right. a guy's going for booze maybe you should just well, give him what they there, want there's, there's the golf clap underneath yeah. like if the, even if he wins and you and you're supposed yeah. to boo him I'll just kind of go all right let's yeah do this should be like an unwritten rule of uh. etiquette where uh you like you get your champion introduction like <laughs> Bobby Roode's a great example right. you hear the glorious music it's so good you got to sing along with it but when and when he wins. Uh, lately, he's been winning clean a lot. Right. You give him the it's like, all right, good, stand all right, up, the champ. You got it. But when he's in the match and he's asking for booze, he puts that baby face in that headlock. Mm. Come on, Hideo, 
I thought you got nothing. He's asking for the booze. You just give him the booze. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, it would be it would be funny if there was like uh, almost fan subtitles where, you know, you just focus on a fan. It's like, I hate you. I wish you were never born. Subtitles. <laughs> You're amazing. I love you. It's also just a different world now too. It's not the way you used to mm. be able to be a bad guy in like the '70s or the '80s. It's True. it's just a. We all know what the deal is so yeah, you but kind of, you, you do there everyone is everyone the f- knew yeah. that then too not so much not, not in the sev- much, in, in eh. memphis in the 70s you could get stabbed by oh, you could get stabbed but people knew <laughs> the score i mean you know like the john stossel interview and everything like that this has been going on like you know your average human being has always has known right. for a very long time well, I, 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 also, I mean i, I hear also, what you're saying i also it's, feel it's like there's a lot dumber people than out there <laughs> it's goofy when you go back and look at that because you know like, everybody watching the show knows it's a show. Right. But meanwhile, the office is still super concerned about keeping the kayfabe. They'll have it incidents like Which a I don't interview where, where Porter gets assaulted. Yeah, it, yeah it's that goofy thing where, like, it's like just, we know it's a show, man. It's just re- hard to get the same heat that you used to be able to. Yeah. So. Well, okay, now, um, I'm not going to stress on this too much because I'm actually covering this. Um, I'm covering a lot of this stuff coming up this month. Sure. But, uh, you know, Triple H actually gave an interview about what it means to be a heel in the modern era and mm-hmm. was actually talking about how, you know, exactly the kind of thing you're saying, that it's different nowadays than it used to be. And, you know, it's, people don't get heat the same way that they could. You can't just go out there and cheaply say, oh, mm-hmm. you know, I hate this town because it smells. Right. Boomy, like right. You, you know, can to an extent. You can, but to an it's it, there's some cheap stuff that you can still well, do. Going back to the Alexa Bliss thing, yeah. you know, you know, she's yeah. like, you know, uh, an idiot says what, and the crowd does it anyway. Like, and, yeah. and that's yeah. but that's little subtle things. Right. That's why I like her because she takes those things where the rowdy crowd is right. trying to get themselves over a little right, bit, right, right. and then she turns it on them, which not a lot of people know how to do anymore. It's mm. those you have to work that much harder. Mm to get that reaction and there's not a whole lot of people that can figure out how no matter what they are or where they are or what position can get that certain reaction paul Heyman is one of those guys Mm. that no matter whatever he wants you to do you're going to do for the most part now you see that reminds me of a couple of years ago this was like um, a point of contention where i think there was some confusion in the audiences with this one was right after wrestlemania 30 when paul Heyman threw a Right, <laughs> super <laughs> dumb. <laughs> the, when when Paul Heyman and came out for, with Cesaro, and it turned out that Cesaro mm-hmm. was you know a Paul Heyman guy. Right. I remember at that moment a lot of people weren't sure. They're like, is Cesaro turning heel? But he's already a heel, or is Heyman turning good? Like no one, yeah. you know. So like Heyman, mm-hmm. yeah, you know. I don't get me wrong, a huge Paul Heyman guy, but right. I'm just saying that you know he doesn't always, he can't always. It's not it's not right a hundred percent of the time, yeah. but. More often, like, I'd say 95% of the time, he's going to get you to get the right reaction. Well, I think Paul, Paul Heyman, like a lot of people, fall into this category where if you go on past a certain age, you're just slowly kind of hovering the realm of Insta over where you have to work to yeah. be hated. Yeah. Like, Jericho is really good at, at his age and how long he's been in the industry, you know, up until recently. Magic. <laughs> yeah, he can still get people to boo him, which was insane because no one thought you could do that if you're Jericho. You're yeah. Chris Jericho. Yeah. You know, not for nothing. Flair there's, was pretty good cer- at that There too. are certain people that can just, like, he had a resurgence this year. He mm. figured out, he's one of the, the, there are very few people that can somehow just, they have that magic in them that gets you to, they, they just have that charisma level that no matter what it is, they figure out how it works. And next thing you know, he got how many catchphrases over? Like 17? <laughs> he got a piece of paper over! <laughs> how do you get a piece of paper he got, over? He got a two-letter word over. Yes. <laughs> there seems to be, uh, there, there's definitely something lost when, be, when it comes to, when it becomes, when it, when it means to become a heel in 2017. When's mm. the last time you've seen a guy cheat? Like, I don't mean cheat. I mean, really cheat. Often, it, it it's non-existent the these Miz days. The Miz is like one of the only persons who yeah. still does cheats. It. Like every single every time he's there, he's standing behind Maurice. He's doing this. Bobby Roode does a cheap it. shot. Bobby Roode is great as it, as much as I love him as a heel. Does not cheat a whole, it, right. Like it goes as Asuka's far as starting. maybe raking the eyes, <laughs> and then that's about it. It's it's ref manipulation. That's what Neville did to keep his title last round. Uh, it, it's it's stuff like that. What happened to the days of guys just outright cheating all the time? Give me the knuckles. I was just going to say Power that, too. When was the last time you saw yeah. brass right knuckles? Right with the tights. Right, right. with the tights. 
powder. Check them, right, 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 check them. Right. <laughs> you, you see a little bit of that more on some like the I like independent the stuff. I like the indie like shows, that. yeah, because sure. uh, there, there, there are shows where uh, the first thing you do after you introduce you guys, you do the quick pat down. Mm. You got to check them, ref. There's one character in New Japan. Yeah. His name's Toriano. That's all he does. <laughs> yeah, that's his, all he does is cheat. He, his character is. I'm the guy that's kind of doing all the promo stuff for everybody, but all I'm going to do is everything I do is cheating. And I remove the perm buckles, I turn <laughs> around when you I give you the mule kick. It's hilarious. And, and I like it for what it's worth, but there was one thing that I like. I think the Bullet Club is cool, but that's mm. kind of something they're really, really like kind it's of like, you know, diff- cheap. And it's a different I don't want it in thing. New J- Well, it's a different thing, but I just don't want it in New Japan. Like, you know, they're, you know, really quick to, you know, bend the rules and all that stuff. Mm. And like, I know that's the whole Bullet Club persona, but. Mm. You know, that kind of thing is always taking me back. But when it comes to Alexa Bliss, I do want to go back to that because sure, I agree sure, with sure. you. Alexa Bliss is like, you know, first of all, you know, I can't say enough good things about Alexa Bliss oh, yeah. because, you know. And that segment from Monday, uh, as atrocious as it was. I was going to say, what was, about that? was not her fault. It wasn't her fault, but it was terrible. That was awful. It was just, it was just really poorly written. You didn't need to do the segment. They tried to, I guess they were trying to make it like. Her, she's a daddy's girl or something, which had never really been a thing up until. I don't we're, know. We're on the way over here, and over I picked place. off. I picked the big problem with the with that angle right off the bat. Yeah. We haven't seen her father. Mm-hmm. We've only seen Bailey's mom in NXT and, then, and the dot the little mini yeah. docs leading up yeah. to tell her story. They're all nitpicky little things, but it just did the whole overarching like thing didn't make sense. No, yeah. I don't. I don't know where the angle could have gone. I but it was savable. But yeah, you know, they just had to rewrite it. You know, it's not a total teardown. But I think the obvious thing, and I haven't seen her in a while, but I think the obvious route to go with Bailey for a heel is where's Izzy been? How is yeah. Sasha, Sasha, Sasha Banks? Fan? Yeah, Sasha Banks has like kind of toyed around with Izzy a little bit, you know, right. you know, made her cry a little bit and all that. But I mean, she's okay. she's grown. She's on a she's on a much larger stage. Should have bring that out. Probably doesn't make sense because she's not able to be there all the time. But They're still. in different sta- states and things like that. You just I don't know. It just it came out of left field and didn't make a whole lot of sense because so we're doing exactly <laughs> what Mick Foley did, but, but with right. no fanfare and right. everybody's in the ring and. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing here. Right, like it just, right, right. And the crowd obviously went, uh, it's like, no. It's like you gave a committee, no. like, all right, your job is to work out this segment. Here's the money you need. And then you go back to them right. like a couple hours before the show. And they go, oh, that. Uh, well, we spent all our money on the beer and pizza. So we could just do this, this, and that. And then it's not <laughs> anything you originally no. thought would go. Because my thing is, you, when you look at Alexa Bliss, when you look at, you know, and what they're doing with Bailey, mm-hmm. and then you look at some of the other things, it seems very clear to me that when you have a lot of these fire women's feuds or women's angles from mm-hmm. NXT, and they brought them up to the main roster, they haven't known what to do with it. Like, Charlotte and Paige should have been much better than it was. And that's not either their fault. That's Booking's fault, as far as I was concerned, mm-hmm. when we had their feud. Now, this is like an insider thing that I would have appreciated. I'm not sure if anyone else would have. But definitely don't bring up Reed. Don't bring that up. Well, uh, I'm okay with stuff like that. I'm 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 okay to to bring in real life, but I think we've just noticed that if it's on Raw, we don't know what it is. But their storytelling is, mm. if it's not with like their favorite three people on the on their show, you might not get anything. Well, and I'm, they're just I just they just have the weird thing with storytelling. So I don't know what it is, but when they're on SmackDown. Those stories get told. Mm. Those he, like Alexa mm. Bliss became a superstar because of mm. her work on SmackDown, mm. and then she comes to Raw, she wins the title, but then like the stories don't yeah. seem right. Or and then the other women on that show all of a sudden disappear. Yeah. Or then Slater and Rhino go from and they, being and they tweet great ab- and they to, like, tweet about right. like, wow, it's funny how uh, the women on Smack- uh, SmackDown are getting on the on money in the bank uh. and we're just toiling we seem like we're toiling way over here uh, who's on extreme rules mm. as far as women go well i think a big factor in uh, three th- and that's it i think a big factor for that is you know uh, what's better about smackdown and they proved it you know again on tuesday when it comes to a division they can build oh, it yeah. yeah it's not just the tag team titles like you know brizango is doing their thing which is separate from the title mm-hmm. picture I mean, yeah, I don't know where American Alpha is in this whole situation. So, well, right. And right. I think that's I? what we've been yeah. saying for a couple of months right. now is right. like, or even what you, you kind of clarified what I'm saying. It's like they have a division. Yes. They have multiple divisions. They don't just have one, two, or three people that seem to be fighting or right. it's always Roman Reigns right. or it's whatever. Right. There's other people that work here. But, oh, yeah, real quick <laughs> reset. So where can they find you guys? Talk- at, at the WHPC on Twitter, Google World Heavyweight Podcast. We have it on iTunes, Google Play. 
World Heavyweight Podcast. Podbean. You get two results on Google Play: uh, us and Flair's podcast. So don't watch Flair's. Just yeah. <laughs> what does he know? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what I was going to say is the feud I actually wanted to set up for Paige and Charlotte, and once again, I'm pretty sure nobody would care about it other than mm-hmm. me. Was you know Dusty had just passed. Right. So I wanted, I would have loved it if Paige said, you know, I'm a Dusty girl, right. and you know, we because you know some of the really you know the smarks out there know about her history with Dusty. Right. So I would have loved it if it was just a reestablished version of Dusty versus Flair again. Yeah. Now, granted. Like, 1% of the population would have wanted that feud yeah. pitched that way. But I would, that's this, the the yeah. rest didn't know they wanted right. it until the story was told correctly, and they go, oh, we do want that. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I'm just saying this is probably why I won't be in charge of booking, because <laughs> I'm going to book for, you know, the real... And, and they we, book for, we would book for the nerds. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I yeah that's that, all I would do. I think, I think that's the biggest difference between Raw and SmackDown 2, is SmackDown's mm-hmm. booked by the wrestling nerds, and Raw is not. And I think if you look at globally, I think that's a better philosophy, personally. I mean, you look at these comic book movies that are really mm. popular right now. A lot of times they are made for nerds. Like, you know. Mm, sometimes. You can argue. Because you're going to always, with those movies, you even hear that it's like, oh, this movie was. Oh, like, stop, pe- guys, people, are always gonna, people are always going to cry about it, but you have to admit they're way more common accurate now than they ever used to be in, oh, like, in yeah. the 70s. Like, you look oh, at the yeah. original Snoop- Superman, as good as that may have been, you know, you look at the comic book accuracy, compa- right. you know, now. You can just do more. Yeah, so, but either way, you know, you just get more. You make a CGI squirrel running around screen all the time. (laughs) (laughs) Excuse me, raccoon. For me, the idea idea is, if you get something popular, the normies, the mainstream people, will see it once. But the nerds will obsess over and see it like 1,200 times. That's how you make money. You don't get it off of just trying to hit everybody as as many people once. You get... (laughs) <laughs> try to hit everybody once, but try to hit the nerds for everything they got, because exactly. they will give it to you. It's starting Ooh, to yes. sound like the alcohol, alcohol industry. Bo- <laughs> hey, you know. New, New Day. Yeah, they took New Day. off and look at, at, like, oh, you have unicorn horns? I didn't realize they need that. I need that now. Exactly. Oh, you have a, uh, a shirt promoting a cereal that doesn't exist? Well, where the hell's the damn cereal? <laughs> I need that cereal in my mouth hole. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The only thing they disappointed us on was the ice cream was totally yeah. a lie. It's a, it's a ice yeah. pop. Yeah. Ice cream it's and not, ice pop no. are two Two completely not the different same things. Thing. Get out of here. This with that. is frozen Kool Aid water. <laughs> yeah. This is ice cream. They are two different things, madam. Ha- however, I'm sure you remember the WWF ice cream. Yeah, bars. they were the best. They were great. Uh, that's ice not, cream yeah. thing. They were great. Uh, that's I not those. my memory. I mean, yeah, I had them, but I don't remember them being good. Oh, they were. They were all the same. They're all the same as like the Ninja Turtles things and whatever they yeah, were. Yeah, not with, like good. the gumballs on the faces. <laughs> yeah, no, but th- for a ten year old, I don't for, know. For, that was that was great. It got a cookie thing on the yeah, top. But, it had chocolate. I'm ready. Give me some. Ice cream. This is I a need ice cream D- now. D- D- Dave, a, what have you had recently that you had as a kid and go, oh, what was I thinking? No, all I'm going to point out is, Lots you know, we're going <laughs> to. <Yes. laughs> this is the whole, you know, the fact of the whole CM Punk point. All I'm going to say is, and I don't want to get into a food rant, but, you know, when you get a chip witch, the cookie still works. WWF part. Chip witches are delicious, yeah. not sponsored. Right. But the. <laughs> anyway, you know what? I'm not going to talk about the ice cream part anymore. We'll just move on. <laughs> you got me sidetracked, and now I want ice cream. This is what happens when you when you let this guy steer the ship. I'm, look, I don't have to steer the ship. This is just me you going off. Oh, I got, I got this. I got this. All right. <laughs> got Howie and Josh, World Heavyweight Podcast. Okay, so we're talking about bad guys in modern era. So how about let's look at the non-WWE heels that you guys. Marty oh. Skrull. Oh, yeah. The elite right off the bat. Marty Skrull, Young Bucks, and Naito in New Japan. Now, Naito is an interesting one for me. Now, uh, now that I, lo- I like a lot because, you know, when he first came out, you know, co- you know he was... Stardust genius. Yeah, squeaky clean baby face. The and then Dolph Ziggler of New Japan. <laughs> but he had such a weirdly slow heel transition into what he is now. And that's what was fascinating to me. It's like, I really like the slow the burn. New Japan. Oh, yeah, the slow burn on him. Like, did, like Chibata's slow burn into the, you know, sh- the, you know, the um, never weight uh, championship mm-hmm. division. Eh, I didn't, well, uh, yeah, I'm not the... Uh, it's, it's just tough to keep track of the day to day. I'm not the biggest Chibata yeah. fan, to be honest. You know, he's a, he's a little, he, you to know... each their own. Yeah, he's a, he's a little rough. I don't hate him or nothing, but, you know, he, his complete and total lack of selling kind of bothers me. That's the strong style I thing know, that they started I know. putting over I, in the I, last year. Well, I, I it's, know. It's the shooter gimmick and yeah. is what's throwing I, you off. I, yeah. I, and that's just, just different strokes for different folks. I mean, some people really like that. The thing so. was, he was. The thing was, okay, like you know, a vertical suplex. You know, he did sell it. You know, a couple of years ago, and then magically, it doesn't hurt him anymore. It, right. It's it's watching that tradition that it, it just didn't the, make sense to me. It was the buildup of the story of you had these like four or five guys that were fighting right. for a title that were I can take anything yeah. you have at me, then hit like, me harder, and then we got and, the skinny and guys. Now and now yeah. we're these like well, well, he was 
and but he's like jacked and everything. Yeah, right, right. So the whole premise was you have you have all these guys that they're fighting and their whole premise is oh I have to take everything you have and be able to bounce right back. So and it becomes and I get uh, it. Yeah. yeah, I get it. It's just you know what little. I don't know. I was looking for something else, and if they want to transition them, fine. But I just didn't. I, I think he kind of went from. U- usually, when they do heel turns and things like that, they're either just a giant surprise, yeah. or you have that nice thing. But with the Naito right. one, yeah. it started from like two years before <laughs> right, even right, like right. you turned into Lij because it started. What was it like Wrestle Kingdom eight? Almost eight or nine? Okay. No, it wasn't nine. It I was like it was eight. Was it on a kingdom? Because uh, no, it because he won G one. Which for yeah. those of you folks who don't know, every year New Japan runs this giant company wide tournament of like twenty people, and it's their G one tournament. Winning right. that tournament is a special thing and a feat unto its own. True, and it also happens to get you their WrestleMania style title shot. So he wins the G one. This tournament of of all the ultra stars of, of New Japan, and he wins. He gets this guaranteed Res- uh, Wrestle Kingdom main event. Except that year, mm. they do a fan vote to see who's going to get the right. match instead. Right, because right, right, right. Who's going to Tana- get the main event slot? And, because and, they're, and who because got Tanahashi, yep. their ace, was so much more popular <laughs> that he got the main event instead of T- Naito, who justifiably earned his. That got under his skin. And well. then he's like, well, you know what? Screw this. I'm done with your traditions. I don't need to follow any of your rules. Then Los Ingobernables are born, and it's the hottest thing. Well, and that's the thing. They also used uh, his home in Mexico as you know part of this, too. It's interesting that mm-hmm. New Japan is using another promotion or another company as part of a character it's evolution. Be- it's because they have to. It's one of those things where they, uh, it's a marketing technique that they're using. Sure. Because they have, but they I think have that's good. to. Yeah, well, they have to work. Because do- not everybody's WWE. Yeah, we no. even talked about it a couple the, of weeks the ago. The difference between thing. first place in the world and second place is still quite. Why miles apart. Right. Miles, miles apart. Right. So, so much difference so you, in money. But more wrestling is better. So if you team up with other people, you use them when you're when your place is a little right. crowded, you send them over to CMLL, you send right. them over to work with Ring of Honor cuz that's how Evil, who is now Scourge, in Los yeah. Ingo, oh, mm. in Los Ingobernables, he started out <laughs> in Ring well, he started out in New Japan, then we saw him while he was doing an excursion in Ring of Honor mm. as Wantanabe. And then he disappeared from that, and all of a sudden, who's this evil dude? Oh, Watanabe. <laughs> so they use they, they they have to just to make sure that they get the best quality product with everybody who's not in the right. biggest company, in which the I think is good, which I think is no, great. It's great, it's more it's better, fun for everybody. And that reminds me of what happened on SmackDown. Now, when it had SmackDown with Kevin Owens, I think this was the first time he actually kind of acknowledged the feud he had with. With El Generico, because uh, the no, way they've talked about they've it, but they didn't say that. They, they, no, he just said, I've been beating up for, for, beating him up for 15 oh, years. Yes. What but do that, you got? No, no, but that's the thing. When they first debuted, and, you know, when Kevin Owens first debuted and turned on Sami Zayn, they made it sound like, oh, they were friends ever since they were kids. And oh, this that's came the out story they told. Yeah, and they just completely ignored the fact that they... Yeah. they, they they've kind of they, told they, that they fight They've had since, but still. That's the difference there. There's still very little continuity between NXT and WWE. It's still, you know, we had... I love continuity, by the way. But that's go doing promos on Shinsuke saying like right. he's never had a match here and then you have the crowd <laughs> going NXT right, right. NXT yeah, yeah. He, that doesn't count yeah, that, and, and that's, that's my, so that's my exact point for, for a large chunk yeah and you're right they have acknowledged it a little bit but mostly they've made it seem like they've never feuded before yep. <laughs> and I kind of yeah. had a problem they, with that yeah so when he brought up, when he when he when he made that crack, I kind of laughed. I liked that. I thought that was funny. Now I'm like, oh, finally they're going to acknowledge that they didn't fight for a first time in NXT. That's why he's a great heel because he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna yeah, he's, he's gonna probably break one those of the rules best ones. when it's convenient and for him. That would be that would be my thing. Like who I think is the best heel right now? It's it's Bray Wyatt. Uh, he's not a heel. <laughs> okay, fine. Really, sir? Really? He's <laughs> Bray Wyatt's Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt's he's Bray one of those Wyatt. few guys that could. I mean, my number two, my number two is Kevin is Kevin Owens, but my number one is Bray. I hear what you're saying about Bray, but Bray right now, like right now, yeah, right now, I, he's being kind of monstery, like he's being viewed as a threat they again. They don't, they never go all in with Bray. No, they don't. He's like Kane. No, he's like they everyone thought he's back the, yeah. whenever they should stomp on the gas. Yeah, everyone thinks that he's the second coming of the Undertaker, but reality, he's the new Kane. He he's was really the, just the new here, Kane. Here's my <laughs> issue with Bray. If he's the second coming of anybody, uh-huh. how about we have him go on a monster run with a title that never leaves his side for more than beat, six months? How about he beats somebody? Nice. 
How, the, how about well, somebody puts been, him over? He's been lately. But, uh, no, it's no. Few but and then, far between. But he besides beat, that, he beat Orton at the, at the you know at the pay per view. That turn. I, I know, fun. I know, I know, I know. Whatever you're gonna say about the Hoss Orton match, I know. I'm fine, just saying. Fine, <laughs> fine that he finally beat somebody here and there, but. Yeah. Why does he then win and then somehow lose or get transferred to Raw or lose the tag titles or get Ray, Bray Wyatt should still be the WWE oh, I champion agree. right I agree. now? Time he oh, gets I agree. Some steam, management just takes it right out from under. There's and no that, reason he should have switched to Raw unless you're planning on having a beat Brock Lesnar uh, in the next two months. Yeah, that hurts me if too. If that happens, fine. Then sign me up. Bray Wyatt beats Brock Lesnar. Yep. I'm on board. Just to be clear, our criticism of your number one isn't because uh, uh, isn't the isn't his fault. Right. It's just they, yeah. No, they no, just I know. Screwing him. Oh no, and I'm the same way. But I think in terms of that, you know, that heel it factor, he's got it. That's why oh, I'm going to back yeah, yeah. him he's as he's my got favorite. The, he's got that crazy level of charisma. But as far as pure, unadulterated, just bad guy heel, Kevin Owens is probably more of the guy that a, a traditionalist would say is mm. the number one heel. Samoa Joe, though, too. Samoa Joe is that guy that. He's like that upper mid card heel that everybody sort of forgets about, but he should be in everybody's top five. See the thing about Samoa Joe, Samoa Joe's lacking in certain categories for me to, to keep him in the in the top front. Like who's who's better in the ring, Samoa Joe or Kevin Owens? It's definitely Kevin Owens, like to me by far. Like, I don't know. I'm putting I'm, put, I'm putting Steen, o- Steen over Joe. It, it, We're splitting it hairs for my point. I think Samoa yeah. Joe and Kevin Owens, they'll put on a seventeen star match. It'll well, be great. Well, I'll I'm put on, it, yeah, sign no, me up. no point in his career could Samoa Joe do a 450. But he doesn't need to. Doesn't no, need to. but Kevin Steen could. So when it just do, there's you know. a reason why he doesn't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that goes into the thing. I do like, wonder if he can still but, cook. But that's a, oh, but Samoa sure Joe is like yeah, you know what I mean. I'm just saying, like, yeah. I mean, I understand they're different animals. Why would Samoa Joe do a 450? Oh, I, I understand they're totally different animals. But you know, Kevin Owens, like I said, you know, I can name a bunch of things that Kevin Owens has done that Samoa Joe never did. And also, Kevin Owens is Canadian. So that gives him an advantage in the ring, I, I think. Canadians are yeah, automatically jerks. Yeah. yeah, but then <laughs> they're, great, all be, they're no, great jerks. Samoa no, Joe best Samoan. Re- best, re- best wrestlers in the world come from Canada. Samoa Joe Samoan. There were mo- a lot of the best wrestlers in the world come from Canada. I shouldn't say all. <laughs> That's not true. But I don't know. I, I think with if you're, if you're saying that, splitting hair. A lot of those okay. things are splitting hair. Our so. WWE sure. champions from Canada. Oh right, General <laughs> Cal- Calgary. That's why. Okay, f- exactly. I'm going to pull it back. So, yeah. <laughs> so not. So no, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Just because you come from Canada doesn't mean you're a great wrestler. But some of my favorite wrestlers of all time come from Canada. Absolutely. So. Bro. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm a I'm a big Canadian mark. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Kevin Owens. You know, I hear you. Don't get me wrong. You could twist me on that pretty quickly. But the reason why I'm saying Bray as of right now, because, yeah, th- yeah, one, <laughs> like the Jinder Mahal thing, just a very little while ago, he was mm-hmm. being treated as a joke. But I will say in the past couple of weeks for Bray, you know, he's being kind of in that monster realm. He's being exactly what they need him to I be. I just don't have faith in Monday Night I don't Raw. either. I don't either. That's but I love, I, mean, I love that Bray's talking about Brock. Like, he's they, not acting like Brock doesn't yeah, exist. They, they, they've just kind of... Ma- with what they've done over the years with Bray, it kind of makes I can't because they refuse to go all in with Bray. It makes it harder for me he has to go the in. Potential. I love he has Bray all Wyatt. The potential. Right, I get you. Right. Yeah, but <laughs> no, I, I like Bray a lot, and I also miss Bray from NXT with his old like because he was even worse. He like is, his, his, like he was even scarier. He was yeah. even like eviler in NXT. I thought. Like <laughs> it, that's just the evolution of things. Once you get the machine behind it and everything. That's true. It's just the, most of everything that I dislike about Bray Wyatt is no fault of his own. It's right. just that the way they booked him. And but yes, that's the I thing because that could change at any moment, though. Because yeah. yeah, it may take you a while before you honestly believe that they're mm-hmm. going to commit to this. But if they ever decide to, it can happen. And I don't think anybody's unsavable. Uh, if you want, real quick, so I, because I had something uh, yeah. for outside of the WWE. Oh yeah, go uh, and those couple of guys. Uh, one who has been one in the past mm-hmm. and whose shirt I happen to be wearing. He's the, <laughs> greatest. the greatest. First generation. First generation. Jay Lethal yeah. is one of the, not some right the, now, but right he now has been. Not, some of the uh, best. And Adam Cole just I turned. I was going to say, baby. Adam Cole Adam just Cole, turned baby. face. But <laughs> Adam Cole, baby. Yeah, I was going to say, is, Adam um, Cole's a good uh, one. He can be a good face. Yeah. But he looks good <laughs> and he just knows it. And he's got that cocky, smarmy bad guy. It's like, yeah, I got this. I'm Adam Cole. That's oh. not, don't forget Cody. Cody's heel work is pretty right. vicious as well. Uh, I'm not uh, a huge fan of Cody Rhodes right now. No? Eh, there's just other guys Who's Cody there. Rhodes? Don't you just mean Cody? Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> no, I mean, Cody. No, I hear you, but I think Kenny Cody. Omega, though. I think Cody is pretty hot right now, so using him as a heel is kind of an odd thing because... 
you know, it was the same thing like when Drew McIntyre left, and you know, when you get someone who's just angry at the mm -hmm. WWE, that's like insta over. Well, he's not super angry about it. He's just he just oh, no. I mean, like yeah. in like internally, he to be in, a bad guy. in interviews, he has made it clear that he's kind of not happy about yeah. it. He, but anyway, he, yeah. he needed to be a bad guy because he, he did his, like, you know, that whole, oh, hey, Cody Rhodes is here, <laughs> eh, 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 yeah. and then started punching people. Basically. Yeah, well, I'm just saying it's kind of wasted momentum. I think uh, breaking out of that show, you know, you're better off. Less Cody show, Rhodes, more Kenny Omega. <laughs> 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 no, Kenny Omega, I've briefly talked about him. You know, we could do so many things about him because he's such a he's such a polarizing figure for sure. They had a great. If you want to know how great Kenny Omega is, I think we shared it on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash World Heavyweight Podcast. You can check out the New Japan G One presser that they mm. did recently, and towards the end of it, they have a live Q and A where the Bullet Club, uh, the Bucks, Kenny Omega, and Cody Rhodes mm. all take over, and Kenny Omega just cuts these <laughs> just. Yeah, Mwah! promos. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge, a bad I'm a huge Jim Cornette guy, but I gotta admit, yeah, I gotta disagree with him on the Kenny Omega thing. Because I mean, I get it, but Kenny Omega, I actually, yeah, and you know. the Bucks, and the <laughs> and the Bucks, yeah, and the, the Young Bucks. bucks. I like the Young Bucks. Policy. I like the Young Bucks too. I've met the Young Bucks. Yeah. They're actually very nice. Actually, sure, come on, Jim Cornette's well. allergic to fun sometimes. <laughs> Come on, yeah. I think it's all a work. I think it's all a core network. I really don't buy most of it. I just love listening to yeah. this possibility. Anyway, okay, we got to wrap it up. So yeah. uh, one last time, where is the, can they find you guys, Howie and Josh? Tell them all. A world heavyweight podcast dot podbean dot com is the direct link. Search World Heavyweight Podcast on the Google. You can find us anywhere mm -hmm. you find podcasts. At the WHPC on Twitter. Facebook.com Facebook slash com. World Heavyweight Podcast. And that's, uh, that's pretty much all of them, I Pretty think. much. Yeah. All of them. All right. Them. Well, Twitter is the easiest way to get in touch with Twitter. us. We do sort of all sorts of fan stuff. We're doing uh, Stone Cold Locks, which I forgot to bring the <laughs> title for. But every pay per view, we put in our locks, and even you can join and see if you can take the title from us. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming, and it's been a blast. So, Howie and Josh, for having us. check them out. And this has been the Dave Knows Wrestling Podcast.